All right, so today we're going deep into the world of remote area telecommunications. Um, and, I mean, really remote. We're talking about the Australian outback, like way out there. Yeah, the outback. It's about as remote as you can get and still find folks who need to be connected. And that's where Distant Curve comes in. And they're doing some pretty incredible stuff from what I've read, keeping people connected in these really isolated areas. Right. And it's not just folks living in the outback, though that's a big part of it. You've also got mining operations, scientific research stations, all sorts of critical stuff that relies on distant curve to stay connected. I was looking at some of the pictures on their website, and you can tell just how remote some of these installations are. Oh, absolutely. We're not talking about your average cell tower installation here. These locations are so isolated that reaching them can involve days of travel, serious off-roading the works. Yeah. I even read something about sites requiring hours of hiking just to reach them. It really makes you appreciate how crucial, reliable communication is in these areas. It is. And when a single truck roll to one of these sites can cost you, get this, a minimum of $10,000, reliability stops being just important and becomes absolutely essential. Wow, $10,000. That's more than a lot of people spend on their cars. Yeah. It really highlights the lengths Distant Curve goes to to ensure their systems are top-notch. They've got to get it right the first time because the cost of failure is just astronomical. And that's where their design philosophy comes in. It's fascinating stuff. I was reading about that. It seems like they've got these eight core design principles that they base everything on, right? Exactly. They're all about resilience, redundancy, and this real focus on power management, which, believe it or not, is actually the biggest challenge they face. Power management? Really? Yeah. I would yeah. thought the actual telecommunications tech would be the hard part. So what makes power such a big deal in these remote areas? Well, think about it. You can have the most amazing network in the world, top-of-the-line equipment, but if your batteries go kaput in the middle of the outback, it's game over. You're back to smoke signals, right? Pretty much. And replacing those batteries, oh man, we're talking another logistical nightmare, more huge expenses. So distant curve, they've had to become experts at squeezing every last drop of life out of those batteries. I bet the environment doesn't make that easy. I mean, uh, the outback is known for its harsh conditions, all that heat and dust. Yeah, it's brutal. And it's not just the heat either. It gets freezing cold at night, too. All that fluctuation takes a toll on the equipment. But distant curve, they're not just fighting the environment. They're actually using it to their advantage. That's right. They've got that thermal diode concept, right? Yeah. Using the cooler nighttime air to keep the batteries at a stable temperature. Exactly. It's a brilliant example of their ingenuity, taking a challenge and turning it into an opportunity. And speaking of ingenuity, we've got to talk about how they manage to keep tabs on everything remotely. Because it's not like they can just pop over and check on things easily, right? Yeah, that's where their custom design system, Curve IQ, comes into play, right? Yeah. It's like their eyes and ears out in the field monitoring everything 24-7. Precisely. It's like having a constant virtual presence at every single site, no matter how remote. From what I understand, they've actually gone through a couple of iterations of Curve IQ, a version 1.0 and a more recent 2.0. You're right. They have the first version. It was really a testament to their ingenuity, especially in those early days. They were working with limited resources. A lot of it was cobbled together, very much a we'll make it work attitude. And you know what? It worked. That first version of Curve IQ achieved 99.999% uptime over eight years on one of their major projects. Eight years? That's incredible. Even in a controlled environment, that kind of uptime is practically unheard of. Yeah. It speaks volumes about their dedication to reliability. Absolutely. But there were limitations, of course. Version 1.0 was a beast to build. We're talking tens of thousands of lines of code, all hand-soldered, weeks of work, just to get a single unit up and running. Wow, that sounds incredibly complex. I can only imagine the headaches involved in trying to update or modify a system like that once it's deployed in the middle of nowhere. You're telling me. So that's where Curve IQ 2.0 enters the picture. They took everything they learned from that first iteration, all the challenges, all the successes, and applied a more modern approach. Think object-oriented design, modular components, the whole shebang. Sounds like a major upgrade. Mm -hmm. And with that, they were able to significantly streamline the building process, making it faster, more efficient, and a whole lot easier to update. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about how Distant Curve tackles reliability and remote management in the middle of nowhere. But what about security? I mean, these systems are practically running themselves out there. That's got to be a concern, right? It's a huge concern, actually. You'd think someone would see a network practically in the middle of nowhere and think it's an easy target. But Distant Curve has thought of that, thankfully. Their security measures are just as impressive as the rest of their tech. 
Okay, I'm intrigued. Walk me through this. How do they make these remote outposts into digital fortresses? Well, it all starts with how Curve IQ communicates. They ditched the whole simple password thing a long time ago. They use something called certificate-based authentication instead. Certificate-based authentication. Sounds intense. It's actually pretty straightforward when you get down to it. Think of it like a digital passport that each device needs in order to even say hello to the system. No passport, no entry. So only authorized devices with the right credentials can even access the network. Makes sense. Exactly. But it gets even better. When Curve IQ needs to use a public network, like if it has to rely on satellite or 4G, it creates a secure tunnel using a VPN called WireGuard. WireGuard, huh? I'm vaguely familiar. Is that the one that's super lightweight? That's the one. Perfect for this kind of thing because it's designed to be really efficient, even with limited bandwidth, which is often the case in these remote areas. So even if the data is traveling over a potentially insecure connection, all that control data stays private and secure. Clever. So they've got the digital security side of things covered. But what about physical security? Uh, Keeping an eye on equipment that's spread out over who knows how many miles. Ah, this is where it gets really interesting. Remember how adaptable they are? Well, they've even managed to bring that adaptability into their physical security measures. Yeah. One really cool example is that they use millimeter wave radar for intrusion detection. Millimeter wave radar. Is that like some futuristic spy tech? It might sound like it's straight out of a movie, but it's actually becoming more common these days. You probably see it in use in everyday things without even realizing it. Automatic doors use it sometimes. But in this context, out in the outback, it's really effective. So how does it work exactly? Detecting intruders, I mean. So millimeter wave radar can actually tell the difference between a human intruder and, say, a curious kangaroo that's wandered a little too close. No more false alarms from wildlife. That's got to save them a ton of hassle. Not to mention unnecessary trips out there. Exactly. And here's where it ties back into that commitment to power conservation. Instead of having power-hungry cameras running 24-7, they've got this system where it only activates when the radar picks up a possible human threat. And even then, it's not just a quick blip on the radar. They've fine-tuned it so that it doesn't waste power on every little thing. That reminds me of that story about the APNI Foundation member who got a demo. They had rigged the system to play a robotic voice saying, WARNING! person detected when it was triggered. It's a perfect example of how they can handle such complex stuff with a touch of humor. It's a good reminder that even in these demanding situations, sometimes you just got to have a little fun with it. It definitely makes them more relatable, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And it just highlights how innovative they are. They're not just a tech company, they're problem solvers. Couldn't have said it better myself. They saw a problem, they embraced those constraints, and they created some truly innovative solutions. It's inspiring, really. And they're not done yet. They're already looking ahead to the future, especially when it comes to AI. That's right. I read some of Matt's thoughts on AI and its potential in Curve IQ 2.0. It sounds like they're just getting started. Oh, absolutely. And this is where things get really interesting because we're not just talking about incremental improvements. Mm. We're talking about a whole new level of potential for automation and intelligence in these systems. It really does make you think if Curve IQ can cut it out in the Aussie outback, it seems like it'd be a perfect fit for other extreme environments too. Oh, absolutely. We're not just talking about the outback here. This tech could completely change how things are done in some of the most difficult spots on Earth, even beyond. Yeah, it's like you could drop one of these Curve IQ setups anywhere and have reliable communication hub up and running in no time. Hmm. And we've talked about the outback, but what about places like disaster zones after an earthquake or a hurricane when everything's a mess? Exactly. When reliable communication becomes absolutely vital for rescue efforts, coordinating aid, keeping people safe, Curve IQ could be a game changer in those situations. It'd be like having a self-sufficient communications lifeline right there when you need it most. And it's not just disaster relief either. We were talking about research outposts earlier, those really remote ones in Antarctica or the Amazon. Absolutely. Places where just staying connected is a challenge, let alone running complex research projects. Curve IQ could be that reliable link, making sure those researchers are never truly cut off, data gets sent back, and everything keeps running smoothly. It's essential, really. And I know we've touched on it, but I keep coming back to space exploration. That's the ultimate remote environment, and reliability is non-negotiable. No margin for error up there? Imagine Curve IQ on a lunar base or even a Martian colony keeping the lights on, so to speak. The challenges are off the charts. Crazy temperatures, radiation, the sheer distance from Earth. But Curve IQ could handle it. 
It's true, that ability to function on its own, diagnose problems, fix itself even, and adapt to whatever gets thrown at it. In some ways, Distant Curve has accidentally designed the perfect communication system for humanity's next big adventure, whether it's on the moon, Mars, or beyond. It's incredible, isn't it? This whole deep dive has been inspiring. Distant Curves reminds us that sometimes the biggest breakthroughs come from aiming for something very specific. They wanted to connect those remote communities in the outback, and they might have just stumbled onto something much, much bigger. It is inspiring, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. It reminds you that innovation can come from the most unexpected places. Who would guess that the middle of the Australian outback would be a birthplace for technology that could one day be running a Martian colony? It's amazing. Right. It really shows the power of human ingenuity that drive to solve problems no matter how tough they seem. And that's a message that goes way beyond telecommunications. Absolutely. So to everyone listening, take this as a bit of inspiration. Whether you're starting a business, chasing a passion, or just trying to get a handle on a tricky project, remember Distant Curve? They saw a need, they faced those challenges head on, and they found some really creative solutions. And hey, you might end up changing the world along the way. Well said. Sometimes a bit of creativity, a whole lot of dedication, and a dash of that Distant Curve spirit are all you need to make a difference. Come to Green more. And that's a wrap on today's deep dive into remote area telecommunications. We traveled all the way to the heart of the Australian outback, met the amazing folks at Distant Curve, and seen how they're keeping people connected in some of the most challenging places on Earth. We hope you enjoyed the journey. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking those questions, and never underestimate what you can learn from a good deep dive.